Hello everyone, welcome to a foreigner farming in the Philippines. Well, it's just a hive of activity around here this morning. As you can see, the these little piglets pin here has been fresh rice holes have been added and they can access that drinker and the little darker shade of the rice holes over there is in is indicative of them uh, using that drinker to access and that's fine where uh, making pens for the gilts uh, Dobbs's gilts and I don't know exactly which ones are slated to uh, be used I would imagine it's these right in here and so there has to be some cleaning done in them and around them to make them accessible and that's what the guys well uh, Consing has come from uh, Mike and Brian's farm to help uh, Ippy is here also Ray is here so that crew of three is working on uh, prepping these pins and Tata and E-Boy are working on nets uh, for the fish so boy Ray is very strong everything when we when we rebuilt these pins here everything just kind of ended up over here so uh, yeah it's moving stuff from one pile to another but it's got to be done you know, since actually four pins are needed here so I don't know exactly what four pins are needed I don't know exactly what Tatai's plan is for them which ones here but uh, we're getting started on it all right well it's looking like These first couple pins here are the ones that they're gonna redo. Kunting, why are you in here lifting the heavy things? Where's Ippy? She's harvesting the sweet corn? Kunting, you work very slowly. Nothing too heavy, huh? <laughs> Crazy old woman. Blanca. <laughs> so, I guess since they're moving everything over to that other side, this is what's going to be used. I don't know. I don't know why oh, they're going to reclaim these. I'll talk to Tatai what he's got planned here. Since we we're using this area here, I mean, I would be I would be more happy if they just utilized all of it rather than just this side. Huh? I'll talk things over with Tatai. Alright, this is a net that Tatai and Eboy have been working on today. 
and it looks like it's looks like it's finished. So I'm going to go find Top Eye and see where they're at. Neither one of them are down here. I mean, if we're ready to start making the frame, I'm up for it. So let me go find him. I want to... Look, I want to make the frames this time just exactly the way that I want them. Tate has his own interpretation and I just want to do it my way. So I'm going to be directly involved. Yeah, they're taking all those walls down. All right. I don't know. Yeah, it works good. All right, so that's one worry off of my mind. Well, the reason we changed over and started messing with the uh, aeration blower was because it's started to rain. Just a little light rain, but uh, no welding in the rain. That's um, that's the rule. So, I don't know, it's a light rain, I don't know if Ray is still working down here. No, they've, they've found some place to hide as well. Well, it's noisy. But it puts out a tremendous amount of air. And a lot of pressure as well. Well, that thing works like a champ. Yeah, it works good. All right, so that's one worry off of my mind. I'm a Ray and Constant got so much done today. Look at all this they did here. They've uh, basically got all this area here cleaned out. Now, Tatai told me exactly how many pens that they were going to build. Three, I think. Uh, one for each of those gilts. And then there was some mention, something that um, they were going to reclaim one down there for grow out or something. I don't know. But anyway... Uh, these here are looking real good. This is part of the old uh, septic system that we had put in here. This orange four inch pipe. Each of these 
uh, stalls, double stalls, when this septic was put in, had a drain in it. When we originally started this piggery, it was all concrete floors uh, with uh, drains, drained in, drained out these uh, pipes here, and there's one more right there, and all that drained into a central uh, sewer pipe here. Same thing went all the way down the piggery and into a septic tank that we had down there. This, it's still there. Uh, it was 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet. It was 10 feet deep, 10 feet wide by 10 feet wide long. And that's what all this drained into. And it became apparent right away that in a piggery this size, uh, you know, we had a pressure washer that we cleaned all the all the individual stalls with. It took one person more than half a day to pressure wash all of these stalls. And the electricity required to run a pressure washer for half a day and the continuous water that the pressure washer was using for half a day. And so if you started at this end of the piggery and by the time you got down to the other end, a half a day later, the piggery that you'd already washed out that you'd started that morning had crap in it again. Uh, so it was never totally completely clean. In other words, you'd have to run that pressure washer 24 hours a day to keep this piggery clean. And run that electricity all day, run the water all day. So these pipes were continually had water running into them. Now thankfully, thankfully we had made that septic big enough to where it could handle it. But it just became so apparent that we were uh, at first, it was Marcel and I that were doing it. Uh, almost all of our day was taken up by cleaning the pens and feeding the pigs. Almost all of it. And so, when uh, we went to another pig farmer here close by and saw his setup, he was using the rice hull bedding method. And uh, hence was enjoying all those savings in both labor and water and electricity cost. Because to clean out the pens uh, with the rice holes, bedding, only takes about an hour to get from one end of the bigger to the other. And what I didn't mention was, uh, you know, you start on one end, by the time you get to the other, uh, there's crap still started again where you began and so it always smelled like a piggery it always smelled like crap because there was always there was always crap around uh, it stunk even though we spent all that time cleaning it every day however with the rice hole bedding uh, it in the bottom I don't think we can see it anywhere in here but in the bottom of these underneath the rice holes we put charcoal uh, about an inch of charcoal that was I've made videos before about making um, carbonized rice holes and that's what we used for the charcoal and so uh, two and a half feet to three feet deep of the carbonized of the rice holes on top of an inch and a half layer of carbonized rice hulls, charcoal, uh, the charcoal absorbed all that smell. In a piggery this size, and at one time we had 50 sows and two boars and over 300 uh, pigs growing out over here, it didn't stink. It did not smell like a piggery at all. 
Uh, it, smelled, it smelled like you were around a couple guys who hadn't taken a shower in a day or two. Uh, which in comparison to how a piggery that size smells is a, a thousand percent different. So that's why we changed over. Someone had uh, asked in a comment saying that they were doing it the old-fashioned way, raising them on cement floors, and uh, why we were doing it differently. Well, I hope that clearly explains why. And in my opinion, anybody who still raises pigs on cement floors is either uh, ignorant, they just don't know any better, or they're just stupid. They know better, but they don't want to uh, change. What can you say, Tata? Yeah. So how many pins are we going to put in here? Three. Three. Okay. All right. Well, it's looking good. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.